Hello again, this is Diane. I'm back to do some more work on this binder. Um, this is the same day in which we decorated the cover and we did one page, this one, and um, I have I did one more page off camera, which was this one. I just put this um, recipe card on there that you could so you could write on it, but I did leave it open and I made this triple pocket on the back side. Um, these pockets don't go all the way down to the bottom. This one is, these are both scrap paper and this is wallpaper. I tucked a little piece of wallpaper in the back so you can use that to embellish other pages if you'd like to. And this handwritten recipe on just a piece of paper they had laying around their house must be. Tuck that in there. Um, I took this out of an old cake recipe pamphlet and um, sewed it to a an index card. So you can write on the back of that. But you also have the complete recipe, I think. And here is a handwritten banana bread recipe, just on a card. And this little, probably a freebie in the box of Knox gelatin recipe book. Uh, the Secret of Better Chiffon Pies. So that's that page. Um, now I'm going to want to put some reinforcements on pages, especially these. These are the original pages that came in this book. So I thought that we would do a little bit of playing with that. Let me grab some scrap paper. I don't need that much, but I just grabbed a bunch. <clears throat> I have some white reinforcements, and I have two background stamps <coughs> that I want to. <coughs> I'm sorry that I want to use. This one is looks like a fabric and like could be a burlap. Looks like little bits of glue. I'm going to have to try to wash them off because it will, well, not that it would matter much, the reinforcements, but they will change the design. And then this one is wood. So I'm going to use these to embellish, to change the texture of these reinforcements. I'm going to use red for this. I was hoping I had a plaid, but I don't. Or a gingham, I mean. We do two sheets with this one stamp. That's a very wide stamp. <laughs> That's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, some of them are a little faded. I'll get some more out for the wood. Might as well do two while I'm at it, right? Oh, this one is missing some. That's okay. This is brown.
Okay, beautiful. Then I would glue these, even though they are sticky back, I would glue them to my pages. So let's do a page with each, one brown and one red, and just see how they look on the pages. That one's already torn, so it definitely needs a reinforcement. I think they look fun. And I'll put three on the back also. But for the sake of time, I'm going to move on to the brown ones. And I'll put probably put two with red in one, you know, like right together. But I'll just move this one to a different section. Probably just use a glue stick to do this. Okay, and again, I'll put more on the back. But those are the reinforced pages. For now, I'll just stick them back in there. We're going to work on making some journal cards. Okay, what do we have here? I'm making two of this type, even though um, I'll probably only use one in this journal because I'm only doing one recipe journal. Um, but these are little scraps of the Graphic 45 paper, and I added three sheets of paper that you can journal on. And I just sewed a little scrap of feed sack fabric there. And on the back, since we have lots of journaling space here, I'm just going to fill it up with a recipe for macaroni and cheese. So I've already trimmed it, rounded it, and inked it. And this piece of wallpaper. I love macaroni and cheese. My sister makes a really good macaroni and cheese. I like mine. We kind of make it the same way, I think. So that's a really fun card. And I don't know where it's going to go in the book, but we'll find a place. Oh, we're not done. I want to stamp on the top page.
just an old rolling pin. This rubber isn't lined up with the foam anymore. Maybe it never was, I don't know. And on the back I have a recipe for peanut crunch icing and peanut crunch banana salad. I don't know what peanut crunch is. Might be crunchy peanut butter, I don't know. And there's a piece of old wallpaper and another piece of old wallpaper. Okay, so that's two more journaling cards that we have. I did ink around these, like I said I was going to. I did these in the other video. And I stamped on the backs and just added a little cutout from scrapbook paper. I guess that goes that way. This one has some washi tape on it because the stamp wasn't quite tall enough. So those are done. Oh, except I said I was going to add some sort of a tab to them. I'll probably just put a piece of lace on there. Now I'm going to do two. I cut some ivory card stock into four by five and a half, and then this recipe page from an old magazine. And I'll add a cutout from an old magazine and then it can be journaled on the back. And once this glue dries, I will probably punch the corners. I just really like rounded corners. Total preference thing. ink around the edge because the the ivory cardstock is showing around the edge. I know I'll have to redo the corners after I punch it.
And I'll probably add some lace to that also. And this one just has a salad bowl with some salt and pepper and lettuce. And I'll do the same thing with this card. Now I have a tag that I want to make. I should have two. There's the other one. Okay. So I'm going to use these handwritten recipes and these pieces, I think, and maybe some scraps. First thing is to cover this with the handwritten recipe. This is just a manila shipping tag that I got either at Amazon or Staples. salmon recipes. Basic salmon dinner and salmon corn scallop. You won't get the entire thing. This one says scallop, salmon and corn scallop also. They're going in different books. So now I will trim around this. Might as well put one of our brown reinforcements on this since we covered up the reinforcement that came on it. If you don't have handwritten recipes, you can use whatever you do have. If you're doing a recipe journal, you could just use pages out of a vintage recipe book or a new recipe book or ledger paper, new or old, or patterned paper, especially if it's a subtle pattern so that the food image that we glue down stands out from it. So something kind of neutral and subtle for the background. I really like this with the fruit plate. The watermelon standing up 
apple slices and strawberries. I'm going to cut the shadow off it though. I guess that's a napkin there. You can tell by the color of this image that it is vintage. It's from an old magazine, probably from the 40s. 1940s. I guess we have to start saying 19 because we're really getting a lot deeper into the 2000s. I know that this does not match what the recipe says, but I'm just trying to make it look cool. And I want to something along the side here. Maybe just that part. This came from one of the Graphic 45 Home Sweet Home pages. I don't want to make too many journaling cards because I just have recipe cards, uh, both unused and used and printed, that I can put in pockets also. But I did want to make a few things. Today is Friday as I am working on this. If I can work on it tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday and I don't always do work in here on Saturday. In fact, I had told myself I would try not to. But um, I'm having fun with this, so this is more like play. And um, I would really like to have it done this weekend or by the end of this week. So if I do, I want to do my housework first and I don't know what else might come my way tomorrow being a Saturday but if I do get in here and get to finish this this journal could be listed Monday or Tuesday uh, January 31st or February 2nd or 1st February 1st or January 31st in case you wanted to keep an eye out for it. I don't know what time of day I'll do it. Um, I'm hoping to, well I'm not hoping to, I'm planning on listing um, the other ledger journal that I just, or binder journal that I just made, the household document journal. Uh, I'm going to list that this afternoon. But, you know, by the time you see this video, it will have already been listed and hopefully sold. But I'm waiting till 3 or 4 o'clock. 
day to do that. Got this little strip I could use. It's a Stampin' Up! paper, and this is an Authentique paper. I've got scraps from assorted cooking kits. I think I like this one because the images are smaller. I could use that side. That's cute. And it shows up better. Let's see what we like better. I think I'm going to go with that one. I think I'll ink this. I just think it'll look better if I do. something in there. I don't know. Should it be uh, a ribbon or a piece of fabric? I think I'll go with a piece of fabric, like a strip of fabric through the hole. This will prob probably be enough handmade ephemera, unless I do, I don't know if I'm going to do fabric clusters or fabric flips. Seems like I haven't added fabric flips to journals in a while. Like maybe since my Christmas journals, but I don't know. I'll have to go back and look at my videos, just out of curiosity. Sometimes it just seems like the fabric flips aren't necessary. And maybe in a binder I don't want a fabric flip. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And I will ink around the edges of these cards. Aren't they cute? I like them. I like them a lot. We have those. We have this one and almost this one. We did this one in the these in the previous video. That's one, two, three types of ephemera, and the fourth one with the paper and the recipe on the back. Cool. I feel like I accomplished something today. I do have some finishing touches to do, putting the fiber or lace or fabric through the holes there and adding some tabs. Finishing this one up. And, yep, um, that'll probably be all that I'll video today. I'll probably do some more work on it without the camera. So, who knows what you'll see the next time you see this journal. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I was trying to hold it back. I'm trying to finish up this video. So I will see you in the next video and I hope you have a creative day today. Bye bye.